in this lesson, we are going to discuss disproving statements involving quantifiers. Let us recall the negation of quantified statements. How do we negate a uh, for all x, p of x statement? That is just equivalent to proving an existential statement. There exists x such that not p of x. That is to disprove for all x, p of x, one needs to show a counterexample. We have to find an element x such that p of x is false. And when we are disproving an existential statement, it's just equivalent in proving uh, for all x, not p of x statement. For example, disprove this. For any real number x, tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. First, let us write this using symbols for all x. In the set of real numbers, tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. In disproving this, we just have to show a real number such that tangent squared x plus 1 is not equal to secant squared x. You might be thinking that this is true because this is a trigonometric identity. This is one of the Pythagorean identity. However, take note that this one is only true for values of x for which tangent of x and secant of x are defined. So thus, this one will give us an idea what to take for our x. This equation will not be true for values of x for which tangent of x and secant of x are not defined. And what is that? We can take x is equal to pi over 2. So that will be in our formal proof. We just say that we take x to be equal to pi over 2. And since tangent x and secant of x are not defined, when x is equal to pi over 2, the expressions tangent squared x plus 1 and secant squared x are not equal. This means that this pi over 2 here is a counterexample to this statement. Next. For every odd positive integer n, 3 divides quantity n squared minus 1. Using symbols, this is for all n element of, let's call this u, where our u is the set of all odd positive integers. So for all n in this set, 3 divides n squared minus 1. Disprove this, we just have to find a counter example. Find an odd positive integer for which 3 does not divide n squared minus 1. Whenever we are trying to construct an object for our there exists statement, we usually want it to be as simple as possible. So we usually try the smaller numbers. What can we take for this one? We can take n to be equal to 3. And it satisfies this given requirement. Note that 3 does not divide 3 squared minus 1. Next, for any positive integers a, b, and c, a raised to b raised to c is equal to a raised to b raised to c. Of course, we know that this is not true. You can actually say that a raised to b raised to c is equal to a raised to b times c and not a raised to b raised to c. However, the formal way of proving that this is not true is really by showing a counterexample. Again, using symbols, this is for all a, b, c and the set of all positive integers. A raised to B raised to C is equal to A raised to B raised to C. The negation is there exists A, B, C in this set such that A raised to B raised to C is not equal to this expression.
So for our proof, what will we take for our A, B, and C? We can take A and B to be equal to 2 and C be equal to 3. Of course, there are many other possible options for the choice of A, B, and C. And then let us show A raised to B raised to C is 2 raised to 2 raised to 3, which is 2 raised to 8, which is 256, while the expression on the right, A raised to B raised to C is equal to 2 squared raised to 3, which is equal to 4 cubed, which is equal to 64. So hence, the two expressions are not equal for these values. And therefore, it only means that these values will provide a counterexample to disprove this statement. Next, we want to disprove this statement. Let A and B be non-zero real numbers. If X and Y are positive real numbers, then we have this inequality. This is saying that if X, Y are positive, then this inequality must be true. However, what is the quantifier for x, y here? It doesn't say, but this actually means we have for all x, y. If x, y is positive, then we have this inequality. So therefore, to disprove this statement, we have to show that there are values for x and y such that this statement is not true. That is, x and y are positive and this inequality is not true. So this expression is less than or equal to xy. Since we are proving an existential statement here, recall from our previous video lecture that you have to do some scratch work in order to determine the values of x and y for which this condition is true. Let us consider this expression. I will eliminate the denominator by multiplying both sides by 2a squared b squared. We get a4x squared plus b4y squared is less than or equal to 2a squared b squared xy. And then, if I transpose this on the other side, what is this? This is just the square of a squared x minus b squared y. This is the square of a real number. And if star is a real number, we know that its square must be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, this less than cannot happen, but it, this can happen. Hence, we want our a squared x minus b squared y to be equal to zero. That is, we want a squared x to be equal to b squared y. And what should we take for our x and y? Well, the most natural thing to do is to take x to be b squared and y to be equal to a squared so that these two expressions will be equal. We have now found our values for x and y. Let us now proceed with our formal proof. Of course, we should start with our premise here that a and b are non-zero real numbers. We will now follow this. We have there exists x, y. So therefore, we start with take x to be equal to b squared and y to be equal to a squared. Choose x to be b squared and y to be a squared. And then we will now show that this inequality is not satisfied. This is equal to a squared b squared plus y is a squared. So this expression becomes b squared a squared all over 2. And hence, this is equal to a squared b squared. But what is a squared b squared? That is equal to xy. So we have just shown that this is equal to this. So 
x equals b squared and y equals a squared is a counterexample to the statement. Next, let us disprove this. There is a real number x such that x to the 6 plus 2x4 plus x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. This is the first existential statement that we are going to disprove in this lecture. In symbols, this is there exists x such that x to the 6 plus 2x4 plus x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. To disprove this, we want to show that for all x, this can never be equal to 0. Therefore, we have to prove a for all x statement. How do we prove our for all x statement? We start with let x be an element of the set of real numbers. How do we show that this cannot be equal to 0? What can you observe about the expressions here? These are all even powers of x. And what do we know about even powers of x? They have to be greater than or equal to 0. Thus, what can we get? We have x to the 6 plus 2x4 plus x squared plus 2 will be greater than or equal to 2. Because this is greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0, and then plus 2. And that shows that this expression cannot be equal to 0. So you can conclude hence... For any real number x, x to the 6 plus 2x4 plus x squared plus 2 cannot be equal to 0. For our last example, another existential statement, there exists an integer n such that n cubed minus n plus 1 is even. In symbols, this is there exists n element of z such that n cubed minus n plus 1 is even. Therefore, its negation is for all n. n cubed minus n plus 1 is odd. For our proof of the negation, where should we start? This is for all n, so therefore we start with let n be an integer and then show that n cubed minus n plus 1 is odd. How should we proceed in proving this? Definitely, we should proceed by cases. So we have case 1, n is even, and case 2, n is odd. For all of this, show that n cubed minus n plus 1 is odd. That is left as an exercise. So for all the statements that we disproved, I wrote proof here. When I say proof, that is actually the proof of the negation of the statement that we are trying to disprove. In our next video lecture, we are going to discuss proofs involving uniqueness.